All right, let's do another example problem where we're finding the derivative. So now in example number three, we have a new function. f of x is equal to 2x cubed plus 4x, and we want to find the derivative, right? So we know that we can find the derivative by applying that limit idea. We can do the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, we can find the derivative anywhere, minus f of x all over h. So let's set it up. Wherever I see an x in my equation, I'm going to plug in an x plus h. So I'm going to do 2 times x plus h cubed plus 4 times x plus h. That's my f of x plus h minus my f of x, which is the 2x squared plus 4x. You notice that I put this part in parentheses because it's important that we're going to have to make sure that we distribute the negative to each term in that parenthesis. So make sure you do that. That's a common mistake I see students make, and then it messes up, unfortunately, everything else after that. So uh, unfortunately, these problems um, take a lot of steps, and if you mess up on any of the steps, it ruins everything from then on. So you've got to be very, very, very careful. Okay, so we just did our f of x plus h here minus our f of x all over h, right? So we should be caught up here. Yours should look like mine. At this point, we're done with the calculus, and the rest of it is just algebra. But that's probably the hardest part, right? What I need you to do now is I need you to FOIL, I need you to, to distribute, and I need you to combine like terms. Now, I need you to be careful on this first part, because what this means now, we don't just have an x plus h squared, we have an x plus h cubed. That means I need you to do an x plus h times an x plus h, get an answer, and then multiply that answer by another x plus h, three different ones. I want you to pause the video, I want you to do that off to the side, and I want you to combine like terms, and then unpause your video and see if you got the same thing I did. All right, when you foiled, you should have gotten x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. Remember, like terms have to have the same exact stuff in them in order to be able to add them together. So after you foiled it three times, you should have ended up getting this. But don't forget, there's a 2 in front that we now have to still distribute to all these terms. I still have the rest of it behind, the positive 4 times x plus h minus my f of x piece. All right, let's distribute the 2, let's distribute the 4, and let's distribute that negative or the negative 1. After distributing all of those uh, values, you should have all the same terms I do. So pause your video, double check that you have everything in my numerator that you have in yours. Now let's go ahead and cancel anything. Hopefully anything without h's, right? So the 2x cubed minus 2x cubed should cancel. The 4x, the minus 4x should cancel. And then all my terms that are left have h's, so I feel pretty good. Since all the terms left have h's, and none of them are like terms, they don't have the same stuff, I can go ahead and GCF out an h, and let's leave the leftovers. When I took out an h, that left me with a 6x squared. When I took out an h, that left me with a 6xh. When I took out an h, that left me with a 2h squared. And when I took out the h, that left me with just a plus 4. My h in the numerator, my h in the denominator should cancel. And now I can apply the limit. So remember, make sure you follow all of these steps and you stay very organized. Yours should look just like mine. You should have the limit as h approaches 0, and you should have all of these steps, blue, red, green, black. Now you can do it in just pencil, but you should have all of those steps. Let's go ahead and smush those two points so close together. Let's plug in a 0 for h here and 0 for h here and do our direct substitution. That means those two terms should end up canceling out, right? Zero times anything is zero. And so you should have left over as your derivative 6x squared plus h. So my derivative, my instantaneous rate of change, is 6x squared plus h. All right, and that's my derivative at any x value. So if you look at parts b and c, it now asks us to find the derivative at specific x values. Let's find the derivative when x equals 2, and let's find the derivative when x equals negative 3. That means we're going to take our derivative at any x, and we're going to substitute in a 2, and then we're going to substitute in a negative 3. When I do that, I end up with 6 times 2 squared plus 4, 
which ends up giving me 28. When I substitute in a negative 3, I end up getting 58. That means my instantaneous rate of change when x is 2 is positive 28. That means when x is negative 3, I'm increasing at a rate of 58. I said increasing because it was positive. If it were a negative 58, then I know my change is decreasing. It's going down. So make sure you know how to interpret what all of these different things mean. Now, I know some of you are cheater pantses and know how to find the derivative a little bit faster. Shh, don't tell them what it is yet. There is a rule, a trick, that we're going to use later in the next chapter. But for right now, in chapter 11, yes, unfortunately, I do want you to do all of this work. I want you to understand that taking a derivative is really just taking those two points and applying the limit to make those two points go close together. So I need you to make sure that you're using this technique to find the derivative for now. And then later on in chapter 12, I'll show everybody what our secret rule is um, so we can find the derivative a little more efficiently than doing all of this algebra. But for right now, I want you to make sure that you practice. Practice, practice, practice.